down just a little bit. I think that's what we did last week. We got everybody up at the table. Would you prefer or you enjoy being in the back row? You're fine? Okay. We'll let you. How does that sound? All right. We uh, have been looking at the, uh, we looked at the humanity of Christ. And I, I learned a lot from that. I, I appreciated that, and I appreciate the conversation on it. Uh, and then we look at, we're looking now at the deity of Christ. Uh, what would be the problem if we didn't have one or the other? Does anybody? There wouldn't be any Christ. Okay, what's his essential, the essential purpose that he fills for us? Salvation, yeah, you you wouldn't have it. Uh, uh, it's one man, sin entered it into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. But the Bible also talks about by the offering of one, the sacrifice of one, salvation comes. And so uh, it he needed to be a man, but he also needed to be God, or else he would have been an inferior sacrifice if he had just been a, a human being. So when somebody somebody says, well, I, I, I believe that Jesus, I, I've heard this one uh, just recently. My mom said, somebody at Maple Vista said that uh, Jesus and the devil are brothers, okay, which is a Mormon teaching, okay. If you think that Mormons are brother, brothers and sisters in Christ, they can be, but they're not a good Mormon, okay. A good Mormon believes does not believe like we believe about Jesus Christ. And... Uh, but if, if Jesus was just a man, then he was a sinner, and he could. And if he was just God, God is not a God is not making atonement for man. It's a God man. It's, he's got to have that that bridge between the two uh, to take our place. So really, the humanity of Christ is what really took our place. The deity made the sacrifice possible. But the humanity is, there needed to be a check in that column. I mean, we're talking about a, we're not talking a little check, we're talking a great big check. It needed to go in that column, and it had to be humanity paying for its sin. So when somebody says that Jesus was just a spirit and wasn't real flesh and blood, which is an, also another teaching of some churches, or if somebody says that uh, Jesus was deity, but he never, he never came in the flesh as a man, uh, or Jesus was, was a man, just a, a good man, you don't have salvation. The story to be, for it to be complete is something we ought to study sometime. It's just the doctrine of salvation. The doctrine of salvation, there's nothing like it. I think, all oh, there's hundreds and thousands of gods out there that people worship. Not a single one of them are structured with the plan of salvation like the true plan of salvation. Uh, it's, it's goofed up. It's man trying to reach up to God and work, and, or it's God's judgment and God's, uh, 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 you know, and if he, he saves some and just at the, the whim, what he wants to do. And uh, you ask a, ask a Muslim if he's sure he's going to heaven when he dies. They've got to, they've got to keep this. It's, it's like asking, oh, oh. I, and I don't mean to be insulting, but you ask a Catholic, and they'll tell you they think they got a pretty good chance. That's what most Catholics will say. Well, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Trying to do it right. And uh, I I was, most people say they're half English and half Irish or whatever. I'm half Mormon and half Catholic. <laughs> and that was confusing. Oh, I bet it was. Kind of <laughs> yeah. Well, you could speak to that much better than I. Uh, I know that my wife, growing up in Catholicism, I mean, and her mom and dad loved her. It wasn't as if they were trying, uh, certainly not trying to hurt her in any way. But Catholic doctrine was difficult to understand. And Mormon doctrine is very difficult. Jehovah's Witness doctrine, very, very difficult. Uh, and the, the plan of salvation uh, is God has taken something so magnificent and made it so that a five-year-old can understand it. Amen. I've got a good friend. As a matter of fact, he's going to be preaching here uh, uh, this spring. Uh, Jay Goldsboro, he said he got saved when he was three years old. Wow. 
And I, I'm thinking, you got to be kidding, Jay. And he said, no. He grew up in a Christian home, heard the plan of salvation over and over again. And by the time he was three, uh, he comprehended it. You know, I, that's the earliest I've ever heard. Uh, but uh, it's not uncommon for a four or five year old to get saved. Just not uncommon. And uh, so, uh, why? Because the plan of salvation is simple. God didn't want to put it way up here on the top shelf that you have to have a degree in theology to understand it. He put it down here on the bottom shelf. Now we'll study it forever because of the, the beauty of it, but the, the application of it's right there on the, right there on the bottom shelf. So uh, that, that doctrine, our salvation rests on these doctrines that we're talking about, the doctrine of Christ with his humanity and, and his deity. If we don't have that, we don't have salvation. And um, so these, these doctrines are, this, they are very, very vitally important. Okay, so we were looking at the, how the, the Bible clearly expresses the Lord uh, uh, Jesus Christ is God. There's specifics that it says specifically that he is. And then secondly, we looked at the uh, uh, secondary scriptures imply the deity of Christ by the possession of God's attributes. And so what we've been looking at are his natural attributes. We've been looking at uh, uh, omniscience. What does omniscience mean? All-knowing. Yes, omniscience, all-knowing, uh, and we, uh, we saw that, and uh, I, I like that John 3.16 and 1 John 3.16. Uh, I got that written down here in my notes. And then all of these different things of, that we, we looked in Scripture, uh, none of these say, and Jesus is God. Okay, that's the idea of it being like a secondary, okay, he's got, he acts like God. He's got the qualities and characteristics of God. That's what we're looking at here. So omniscience, all-knowing. Uh, then we saw the attribute of God's omnipotence, which is, makes him uh, the, uh, the almighty in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8. He's all-powerful. And so we looked at that and uh, got most of the way through that. Now we're going to start, we're going to look at this. He has uh, a part of his power, because I think this is a great, a great point to be made, easy to forget, uh, and that is he has power over devils and evil spirits. We're going to start with that. And uh, let me see, where did we start going around the room last time? About right here. Okay. All right. We're going to, we're going to start over, uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to start with Kevin. Okay. No, we're going to do. No, we're not. No, no. We're going to start with Kurt because he thought he was going to come in and hide behind <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Kurt, gotcha. Uh, Kurt, why don't you look up Matthew chapter 8 in verse 16. And uh, Sandra, would you look up Luke 4.38. And uh, then we'll come right up to uh, Pam, Luke 7, 14 and 15. And Joe, Matthew 8, 26 and 27. And then Eugene, Matthew 21. 19. Okay, so let's look at this first one. He has power over devils and evil spirits. Matthew 8, 16. When the even, even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Okay, he has power over devils and evil spirits. I want to take just a, just, I really don't want to get in the weeds on this because it's a whole other study. We have the impression that God struggles with the devil. Okay, there's a battle going on. We know that, we're aware of that. But do you think that God struggles with the devil? I don't think he does. I don't think he does. Um, I know that you read in Scripture in the book of Daniel and other places where angels and evil spirits struggle with one another. But ultimately, Jesus, is the, Jesus created every one of those demons. Did you know that? Yes, sir. The angels and the demons are essentially equal creatures. Just the one chose by free will 
to follow God. The other chose revolt. But they're otherwise pretty much on an even plane. Sure. I sure. Well, I think you're right. And so they're, they're, they do struggle with one another. We don't see anywhere where Jesus struggled, even struggled with Satan. In the temptation, that wasn't, that wasn't, I, I don't read anything. When he drew off the devil from people, he said, I uh, command you not to go up, tell the demons, don't tell them to nobody. Right, that's kind of an interesting thing, isn't it? Yeah, so he had, a, he had authority over them. He had the power to be able to tell them what to do and what not to do. Uh, I, I really, uh, I, I, I believe that we're going to see more and more I don't like to be spooky, but more and more manifestations of demonic power, strength. Uh, I've got enough friends that, have you ever talked to an, uh, a missionary from a third world country and some of the stories that they have to tell? It sounds like the New Testament. It sounds like, you know, where these, these demons are worshiped and they're 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 powerful, and uh, the the stories are. I wouldn't even say I, I wouldn't say frightening, but they're concerning. You know, I mean, maybe in some ways frightening. You heard the one in Brazil, where they had a big old parade of the demons going down the street. They had Jesus going, whipping him. And yeah. I mean, it was all demons. Yeah. So it's, you're saying we should believe in demons? We should believe in demons? Yeah, th there are oh, certain... They are around. Not that we worship them, but... No, but there yeah. are bodies that they are around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around. I, I do. I, I believe that. I, I, I believe that a lot of the... Uh, I'm not... Uh, the point that I'm trying to make is that God does not struggle with demons. Amen. And what we're not supposed to do is we're not supposed to fear them. And when we're taking the authority that God has given us through the Lord Jesus Christ, we have not only nothing to fear, but they are they 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 have to respond to us. Okay? Uh I'm not I'm not uh, the I'm trying to explain it right, but I, I, I'm not one of these things where demon come out, you know that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, I'm I'm not hypercritical about that, but sometimes that becomes an unnecess unnecessary uh, personal demonstration, like I have some kind of power, um, and we don't see Jesus yelling and screaming and making a... He just basically said, depart from them, come out, leave. When he has the authority, it's like a parent. When a parent has authority over their child, as soon as you lose your temper, you've just forfeited part of your authority. When you start, you know, slamming around, you don't have to. Uh, a good police officer doesn't slam anybody around unless, unless they're in danger or endangering somebody else. Why? They have the authority. And uh, uh, I believe that uh, wholeheartedly, I, I believe, and I've prayed over this building many times, I think this building has had struggles. I, I think that... Uh, you think demons know your thoughts and your mm, mind? Oh. Do they know your weakness? No, but they're smart enough to pretty much... Well, they're smart enough, smart enough <laughs> to know they don't have to read your mind. Uh, often what happens is you don't have to say a word. They know what's going on by our demonstration. We demonstrate if you have a bad temper, if you have a lustful spirit, if you uh, if you're you're a thief, if you're a liar, they're going to know that. That's not. Um, so I guess the point that I'm trying to make here is, without going in, maybe we'll do a study on this sometime. But uh, uh, the demons are real. The Bible talks about powers and principalities and and things, and 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 they are powerful. But they're not. Go, I tell you what, we go to this meeting tomorrow. You're going to sense it. Mm -hmm. You are going to sense it. I've been in some places where it's just like my hair stands up on end because uh, you know something's not right here. There's something. There's something going on behind the scene here, 
that as a child of God, uh, I, I've had to walk into bars and crack houses and things like that and try to get, get people out. Well, you walk through the door and you swear it's like one of those old Western movies. You walk through the door and the jukebox stops playing and everybody stops and looks at you. And, uh, you know, like, uh, you're not supposed to be in here. Well, I'm sensing I'm not supposed to be in here. Or uh, this is not my place. This is not a place that honors God. And, um, but, yeah, I, I think if we could see with spiritual goggles, spiritual glasses, we, we would see some things going on and we would... Uh, you know, it would be pretty, pretty amazing. Yes, ma'am? I was just going to say, Pastor, when Jesus was tempted by Satan, he always went back to the Word of God. Yes. Yes. He did not even use his own power at that. He went to the Word of God. What were you going to say, Pam? Oh, I was just going to say, a demon, they cannot enter a believer. I agree. I, I believe that. You know, there are some that believe that it's possible, but I don't believe that. Correct. You know, and uh, yes, sir? I was just going to say they've been around for at least 6,000 years watching us. Yep. Yeah. They know us better than we know. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, sir? I just think it's interesting that you're saying that Jesus always went to the Word of God, but Satan always did, too. <laughs> but he what? said it is also written, so you got to know the whole Scripture. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the idea of, of being of maturing as a Christian is so essential. It's just so essential. Uh, as a parent, oh my, there's so much room for making spiritual mistakes. Oh, I got I to gotta grow up. I, I'm a grandpa, 16 kids that look to me, and uh, I got, you know, five kids and five in-law slash outlaws and uh you know I, I i love every one of them and they look to me i'm the pastor of a church okay don't minimize yourself people look to you okay and so we need to we need to make sure that we're spiritually strong spiritually fit uh the devil is a liar he's a deceiver he uh, he tries to pervert everything every, every good thing he tries to drag it down and we see here that jesus uh, had authority over the demons. And the Bible says that as a Christian, positionally, we are in Christ. Okay? And the Bible says that Jesus has all things under his feet. So if I'm in Christ and I'm just a, a little toe on the body of Christ, all things, powers and principalities are still under me, not because of me, but because I'm part of the body of Christ. Okay, so there's, there's the authority there. And we don't have to live in fear, we, but we ought not live in ignorance either. And uh, as a child of God, it's so important. Uh, and I, I think maybe we'll do a study on that at some point. My mother was crazy when I was, when I was little. I mean, just five, six years old, my mom taught me all about the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast and the, seven, the, the plagues and the vials and the bowls and all that kind of stuff and, and uh, uh, you know, about the beast and the false prophet and, and, uh, and get going about uh, evil spirits and all that kind of stuff and they're having a Bible study and I'm sitting there, I'm five years old, my eyes are getting bigger and bigger. And they say, okay, son, it's 8.30, it's time for you to go to bed. Uh, I, uh, I have not let her forget that. That terrified me. As, but as I have matured, am I comfortable with it? No, I'm still not comfortable with it. But the fact is, is that as we, we, we mature, we understand where we are in the authority chain if we stay in Christ. Now, you want to go out and, and when a Christian violates the will of God and is out there in left field, he is in serious trouble because the devil hates you. And you have lost an awful lot of your protection by not being in Christ in that sense. When you're rebelling against him, you're, 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 you're playing for the wrong team, and you're going to get in trouble. And uh, so uh, the, the devil, I like to think of it this way, the devil carries God's water. The Bible talks about, uh, some, uh, Paul spoke of it, I can't remember exactly where it is, where he turned over so-and-so to Satan. 
was it Hymenius and Alexander or somebody like that? It was, or, or the coppersmith, or whatever. He turned them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Turn them over to Satan. I threatened to do that to one college student. <laughs> and he stopped me as I was praying. I just told him, I said, you sit still. Because he was giving me, a, I mean, he was being outrageous. And I said, listen, no. If that's the way you're going to be, I'm going to turn you over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. So let's pray. And all of a sudden, he's, wait! <laughs> wait! <laughs> I don't know if I really would have gone through with it. But it, was, it worked great. It was a great tactic. But, uh, but I, I like this, that he has power over devils and evil spirits. And guess what? He likes us. We're on the right team with this kind of stuff. Oh, isn't that a blessing? You said uh, that, that devil, he's the, uh, like the father of liars. Yeah. He always lies. Mm -hmm. But that time when that man was in the tomb cutting himself, the man was cutting himself in the tomb, Jesus asked how many of you? And he said, legion? Mm -hmm. Like well, many? Uh, how do you know the devil was lying to Jesus? And he said, many. He ain't going to lie to Jesus. Yeah, you can't. He, well, because he's um. Lie you cannot lie to Jesus. <laughs> you I'm can, sorry. but he's going to know better. Yeah, yeah. You can't successfully lie to Jesus. How does that, or convincingly? Okay. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I just I have something I've always wondered about. Why does Satan have access to heaven? Like he can come and go. Mm -hmm. Like, what does he do up here? Yeah, there. Is, I mean, well, the Bible says. Uh, he, I don't think he. Yeah. He accuses us. Yeah. He was but there. Jesus about Job. Yep, he was, came before God. Well, there is a there is a time the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation where he is cast down to the earth, and uh, that's when that's that second three and a half years of the tribulation period where it gets really, really, really bad. But I'm and, like, right uh, now, though, he has access. Yeah. Well, apparently, uh, I, I think part of it is that God tells him what to do. He told what? He, he told Job, you yeah. can do this or that. Yeah, God, yeah. was before God yeah. at that time. Talking about uh, Job, I mean, there was, they, look at the devil, he take your life if you want to. He took all of Job's family. Only with the permission of God. Yeah, yeah but still, look at Only what God yeah. allowed. somebody to convince uh, Ahab to go into battle to be defeat, to be killed in battle and who's going to do that and then the evil spirit went forth and said I'll be the lion spirit and all the mouth of the prophet said go and do it yeah. and God will reward you according to your heart you want deception you want lies or you want, he'll give you the lies yeah those are interesting points because it is exactly it he, he, there is not it is not like this the, the spiritual warfare is not God and the devil that's not the way it is. It's God. And what God does is he, he uses the devil. And uh, I can think of some times in my life where I got myself in a whole lot of trouble. And I really think that uh, God used the devil to kick me in the pants and uh, help kick me into line, quite honestly. Uh, so, yeah, I, I believe that God uses, uh, there, we have this thought that you have, and there's always all the movies about it and the Hollywood versions of what the devil, and the devil is the, the you know, in hell, he's, he's in hell and that's his territory. He's not in hell. He's not in hell. And his, uh, you know, some of the demons are already there. I don't quite understand all of that. But uh, you have that, you, you have, you don't have Satan with his, kingdom that's in opposition to God on an equal basis. He does have a kingdom that is in opposition to God, but it is not on an equal basis. Okay, go back to uh, John, uh, John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things, let me see, uh, about creation. I'm going to get it wrong. But anyway, all things were created by the Word of God. That includes the devil himself. And so he has that authority. So um, 
it's an interesting study. Let's hop out of that ditch then. And, uh, but, it, it, but it is a good study, and it shows the, what the point here is Jesus spoke and they obeyed. They begged him at different places. They pleaded with him in different places. They po pointed him out as being the Son of God. They pointed him out as being Jesus of Nazareth, of all things. Uh, and so uh, he had the power over them. If Jesus has the power over them, we don't have to live in fear when we're walking with Jesus. It's like having that six foot two cousin that bails you out when you're running down the alley because somebody's chasing you. And I'm thinking about a specific time in my life when that happened. And I was so f glad to see my cousin David. And I ran behind him and said, David, help me. And uh, he looked at me and said, that's my cousin. You know, kids, you know. Uh, but anyway. Uh, all right, let's go on. Uh, Luke 4.38. Okay, there's many places in Scripture where we see that uh, they brought the diseased, they brought the sick, they brought um, they brought, brought the infirm, the crippled, the leper to Jesus, and He healed them. Okay, this um, is is sort of tarnishes the idea of Peter being the first pope because he had a wife and a mother-in-law. Okay, but um, uh, Jesus was able to heal diseases. And uh, healing of diseases was, uh, often was a sign. And there are some people that believe that that's done away with. Now maybe as a sign it might be done away with, but there's just too much scripture that says that we're supposed to go to God for healing. And, uh, you know, it's, it, I don't know if there's such a thing as a healing ministry. I really don't. I don't really know if there is such a thing. Um, but bless God, I don't think it's certainly not as known as there's nothing wrong with praying for the sick. The Bible tells us we're supposed to pray for the sick. So we see here that he had power over diseases. Uh, Luke 7, 14 and 15. Then he came and touched the buyer, and they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. All right, he has uh, all-powerful all uh, over death. Uh, that was the, the raising of the widow of Nain's son. And um, uh, Jesus never went to a funeral that he didn't break up by robbing them of the guest of honor. Okay, uh, so we see that he had power over death. And that goes on. Now remember, that is a cornerstone we read in Philippians about uh, the power of his resurrection, his personal resurrection. There's power in that. And I believe that when you see him raising the dead, a lot of that is, that is evidence of what he was going to do, and that was walk out of that tomb huh, alive himself. Okay, Matthew 28, 26, and 27. And he saith unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? <laughs> Isn't that great? I hope they have, I hope they have video recordings of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can just, we'll I, just be able to transport right to it. Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see it. I, I want to see that happen. I, Oh, that's amazing. So he had power over the elements. Well, why would he have power over the elements? Not just because he was God, but what? 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 what he took, made them. He, he made them. them. He created them. He holds them together. And, yeah, by him, the Bible says, all things consist, and so he has that kind of power. And then we see uh, Matthew twenty-one nineteen. Yeah. Oh, did I skip one? Did I? What did I give you, Eugene? Uh, I thought it was 18. Yeah, 21, 19. Yeah, 21, 19, if you'd look that one up for me. Where is it at? Okay. And when he saw, 
a fig tree in the way he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only and said unto it, let no fruit grow on these. Henceforward, for even forever and presently the fig tree withered. Okay, here he is. He comes up, he went to the fig tree, no fruit on the fig tree, he curses the fig tree, it withers. So what that one is, it may not be on your, on your paper, that's nature. He has control over nature. It wasn't the season yet for that thing to grow. I, I, I'm, all I know is he wasn't very happy with it for one reason or another. Uh, and um, so anyway, he, uh, he cursed the tree, and the Bible tells us that he basically he killed the tree. Jesus killed it. Okay, it's like my wife. Anytime she gets a house plant, it's dead. I'm telling you. It, it's a goner. And so... <laughs> Okay, so what we're seeing in here, the, the, omnip the power that Jesus had while he was on earth and what he presently has is overwhelming. He is, he is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. Uh, okay, so let's go on. We're going to see what time is it? Oh, we got a couple of minutes. The attribute of God's omnipresence. Okay, omnipresence. That means he's everywhere uh, attributed to Jesus Christ. Okay, where were we? Roseanne, you want to look up um, John chapter 3 and verse 13? Dennis, you want to look up Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20? And Vicki, look up Ephesians 1.23, if you would, please. Okay, John 3.13. Okay, Christ was in heaven while he was present bodily on the earth. Okay, this is kind of a strange thing. How can you have Jesus? The Bible talks about having, ha having the spirit of Christ, but yet he's sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven. Okay, uh, the Bible doesn't, Jesus was not in one specific place at a time. He's omnipresent, he's, which is an attribute of God himself. So uh, he was in heaven while he was uh, bodily on earth. Uh, let's go on to uh, Matthew 18, 20. Did you find it? Okay. Okay, now the scripture, once again, scripture tells us that he's seated at the right hand of the Father. But the Bible also tells us that when, that he was just in the midst of us just a little bit ago. Okay, so what we, what we see is Christ is on the earth while he's even presently in heaven. We're talking about now. We're not just talk, not talking about when he was uh, on the earth, uh, but... Uh, you know, during his nativity and during his, his time before his crucifixion. We're talking about even now. So when you hear this, the idea of, of it's, it's not just the Holy Spirit that is present with us. The Trinity is omnipresent, okay? And they each have their role, and which is a whole other, once again, a whole other study. But uh, Jesus can be present with us and still at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Okay, so that makes him omnipresent. Uh, and then Ephesians 1.23. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Okay, that's, and that's reference to Jesus. Jesus Christ fills all. He fills all.
I sometimes have a hard time even wrapping my head around some of that stuff, you know. But um, I'm just reading a book here today about a, a little bit about that and how how God's view of things, you know, we see things singularly we in this moment. We see things in this moment where God sees things past, present, future. I, how do you how do you even how does that, how can you put that together in your head that he can be here but he's also there and he can he can be there 20 years ago and he's there 20 years from now now that's yeah 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 i know but when the devil came down he was a, he was an angel and then 10 percent where how many percent came down the angel a third yeah a third of the devil and they went out through the people. Could that be like God come down and then the other part of the angel came with God and No, I think that No, I think that it's 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 his his omnipresence isn't based on how many angels he has. You know what I mean? It's a whole different dimension and uh, it's hard it's really it's hard to even comprehend it. But uh, but Jesus is part of that. The point is is that Jesus is part of that. It's not like you have God here and he's the, the boss, and Jesus is under him, and the Holy Spirit is under him because you never hear the Holy Spirit speaking uh, in Scripture. The Holy Spirit rarely is, is, you know, doesn't impose himself. And so you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's not the way that it is. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're not even side by side. They're three in one, which is also another one of those concepts that will blow your mind if you think too long about it. Okay, so here we have, we have Jesus, he is human, and we also have Jesus who is the powerful creator God. And uh, this is the Lord Jesus Christ whom we serve. So, yes ma'am? Um, earlier um, you said that you believe that um, Jesus still heals today. Yeah. And I believe that Jesus does heal today. And I believe that he heals us physically, spiritually or emotionally those are the three things he can tap in even those that are really really ill their emotions are being maybe their physical body is not healed but their spirit and their emotions are I, that's what i believe well i believe that and there's certainly a lot of bible to back that up it really is Okay, well, let's have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time together. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would help us to have a better understanding of, of who you are and your care for us and how powerful you are and how that reassuring that ought to be to us. And Lord, we're just so weak sometimes that we doubt you and we doubt your power and we get anxious and we get frightened. God, I pray that you'd help us to have a better view of you so that we can walk in strength and uh, be comforted. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.